want to welcome y'all to Tone Deaf Testimonies. Yeah, let's get it. Straight out the gate, it's time to separate. When the work is this hot, you can't wait till it bakes. When you don't, the call shots. It's red dots of the face. A marathon, not a race. When you hear the trail blaze. Unfazed, I'm attacking airwaves. I ignite the nights, making waves in the bay. I'm the mouth of the south. What more can I say? I don't hesitate, cause I just elevate. This is my moment to shine. I'm a component of life. And if you're not about to grind, you're an opponent of mine. I put it all on the line in pursuit of my prime. I stand tall in my stance. There ain't no stopping my stride. Ain't nothing phony or fake. Ain't in this game for the fame. I'm in this thing for the change. Impacting lives on the way. Bringing life to the stories. Giving God all the glory. Through the shine and the glory. Tone death testimonies. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? This is Tone Capone holding it down for Tampa Bay, Florida. I'm originally from Junction City, Kansas, and I like to, you know, dibble and dabble in some things in the media right now. Like, I'm the host of Waves of the Bay on a FM radio in Tampa Bay, 88.5. That's every Saturday from 10 until midnight. Uh, let me shout out my co-host on that DJ Spaceship, man. That's my brother right there. I want to do something different, man. I want to start something else up. And as you can see in the background, I got that Tone Deaf Testimonies is what we're going to call it. So, uh, pretty much what this is, there's uh, there's some people I want to talk to that we're not able to get on the radio or we don't have enough time to talk to on the radio or we just want to elaborate more or just get a little bit more, you know, in-depth with it. So uh, because of that, I figure why not? Let's go with Tone Deaf Tuesday. Uh, see, I already, I already trademarked it, man. Tone Deaf <laughs> Tuesdays, bro. Tone <laughs> Deaf Tuesdays. Hey. I like that. I like that. But we're going to call this one the Tone Deaf Testimonies. And uh, my first guest I have here is the homie Reckless. Uh, holding it down, man. So, Reckless, what's good with you, man? Welcome to the Tone Deaf Testimonies. What up? Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Bruh, it, man. I'm excited, man. I'm excited because you get to be guest number one, man. And this is some new stuff. And uh, like I said, you can cuss all you want to. I'm, I'm about to start cussing here in a second, probably, you know, just reliving my FM days because I have to just stay so clean on the radio, man. And sometimes yeah. it feels good just to let loose. But we'll see. We'll see. But, uh, yeah. yeah, man. I'm a, I'm a loosen up a little bit. I'm a, I'm 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 a little corporate slash dad right now, but I know as soon as I get into it, I'm gonna let loose. <laughs> hey, I feel you. That's why we scheduled this one after my baby girl's bedtime. That we don't have to worry about it, dog. So trust me, I know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, man, let's go ahead and get it started off with you know just a generic question like, who are you? Tell us about you know yourself as an artist and where you're coming from, things like that. You know. Okay. So. um for for those who don't know me, I go by Ray Rec, aka Reckless. But hey, throughout the Bay, it's been Reckless, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been moving Reckless, <laughs> recklessly all day, <laughs> all day. But you know, I started off with the name Ray Rec. A lot of the people who who know me from back in the days knows me as Ray Rec. Um, man, I've been I've been doing music for a number of years, you know, um, as an MC, a producer. Um, I wrote hooks and and verses for for my homies back in the day you know so it I basically just started off writing hooks and producing for other people and then um I moved on to being a a, a solo artist you know and I just been building from that how did that um, happen like when you was working with everybody else and then just moving to your own like what was your mindset when that when that happened was it just like all right, let me go ahead and put the cape on and, and go to work or what? Well, I think what it what it was is I went off to when I went off to college, I was away from all my homeboys. You know what I mean? Everybody that I grew up with, I was out there by myself. And um they had they had talent shows on campus and everything. And I really wanted to get involved and I just decided to go for it. I was like, let me, let me try this out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm out here. Let me just, uh, let me put my stamp on things out here. You know, I went to Bethune Cookman. Okay. They told the beach. And uh, I got, a, I got, I linked up with a couple of cats out there on on the campus. Um, my, my homie um, Bliss from, he's from New York. 
and a couple other cats. We just got together. We was freestyling and everything. And it was like, yo, you got a little skills. Why don't you, why don't you try something? Why don't you get out there on your own and try something? So um, I did. You know, I tried it out. I got on stage. I actually did good. I thought I was going to bomb. I, I was scared. <laughs> I was about to ask you too, man. I did you do I your own going... music or did you do like a cover when you got on stage? Um, the first time I got on stage, I did a cover. I, what did I you do? Um, I did, I know one, I did Tupac's um, Me Against the World. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't me against the world. It was shed so many tears. I love that beat. Shed so many doom, tears. Doom, 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 doom. I mean, I just doom, doom. All right. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. yeah. Um, and then we had like a little, we had like a little medley too. Like you, you didn't just you wanted to utilize all your time. So I did like a couple of beats. I chopped up a couple of beats and then just spit, you know. Um, but as far as like doing my own beats. Bro, let me tell you, you know how they send you those credit cards when you first turn of age? The first credit card I got, I bought a DR5, like a rolling <laughs> DR5 drum machine. It just blew the whole the whole limit. <laughs> it bees like that sometimes. There's worse stuff you could have bought. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But that's how I knew that I really had the passion for this, man, because I didn't, without even thinking as soon as i got the card i went straight to the music store and bought it <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah and you think about way back when that first piece of equipment and now you're you know you're working in you know major studios uh, yeah. what a difference of, uh, yeah it makes a huge difference with that so you went to bethune cookman and you started spitting and then what happened from there um, from there, I, you know, I stayed in touch with, with the guys that I was coming up with here in St. Pete, and um, they was moving. They was, they was getting a little buzz out here, and um, I came back home to see what they was doing, and they was doing shows out here, and then we, we um, got invited um, to compete for a position to open up. I'm, I'm showing my age, but I got to tell you the truth. It's all good. So we... we we got a, we got an invite to compete for a position to open up for the Fugees. Hey. When they came out with the score, okay, they was on, they was on tour, so we competed um, at this club out in Tampa, and uh, we won. Like as a group, we won, and we got to open up for the Fugees. We opened up for Keith Murray. Um, it it just really it really took off from there. Then um, we got invited to open up for um, the Lost Boys, so they was moving. But then it just got it got it got crazy. Um, a lot of guys got the big head, um, egos, man. Yeah, the, the the egos, and they wanted they wanted this set of guys, but they didn't want them, those guys there. You know, it kind of it kind of split us up, you know. So I went back. I went back to school, and thing things just fell apart. You know, as far as us being a group. You were the glue holding them together. I would I would say so because I've always been the 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 mediator and the moderator <laughs> when right. when there was when there was issues within the group. We had a lot of talented cats. You know, my my friend. Uh, one of my close friends, E. Villain, he, he passed away years ago, um, but he was very talented, and there was a lot of of um, record labels after him. Even when we were in high school, when we when we were just starting out, um, there was a lot of record labels after him. Um, Slip and Slide Records was looking at him, you know. So, so we knew we well we felt that he would probably be the one to blow. But um, mm -hmm. his life got cut short, you know, tragically in a in an accident. But um, sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, it was it it was rough, and I think that's when the the group really broke broke apart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I went I went on. I kept strong because again, man, I, I I love music. I've always been in involved in music, so I kept going. I moved with with some of the cats that I linked up with in school. Um, we. 
I think we opened up for like the Yin Yang Twins when they first came out. Yeah, um, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I mean, we did. I did a lot of a lot of work, you know. But the thing is, Tone, the hard part about it is everything we everything we gained, we had to earn it. Like there was nothing handed to us. So like you know how cats they go in the studio, they they got studio time, or they can build a studio in their house. At the time, man, we talking about coming out the pockets for equipment. <laughs> you know, not- I do know, I do know. I remember right before I moved to Tampa. This is like '05. This is the summer before I moved. I remember uh, my dude told we just got. I just started getting into music like right around that time, and my dude yeah. was like, "Yo, you need to get Pro Tools, and you can put it on payment plans." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> bet." <laughs> so twenty four payments later. I'm I'm over here chilling with pro. You know, I already had the pro tools the whole right. time, but you know, I finally paid that thing off. It was like school, school loans almost stuff. Uh, yeah. Almost like Sally Mae when I got done paying that damn thing off. Yeah. Like, you sometimes you gotta invest in yourself though, man. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so I I just you know I just built for me. I always work. I did a little bit of DJing. Um, I went to school. Um for mass communications and I had a, a specialty in broadcast technology. So um, I worked at, worked in college radio. Um, I was a production um, director at um, WBCC radio. I was a on-air jock. I actually did some on-air um, work here in St. Pete. It was on an AM station thing. It was like WRXB. Mm-hmm. And, um, but the thing I found out that, it ain't no love in the radio industry. <laughs> it's even less love right now, man. Radio's starting to become extinct, to tell you the truth, bro. Yeah. I mean, unless you are a huge celebrity, you know, on-air personality, you ain't you ain't you ain't making no money. So I had right. to, you know, I had to I had to hustle, man. So I was doing that and DJing on the side and trying to finish up school and working. <laughs> you know. But it's all for the love, man. It's all for the love. You know? Let me ask you this, man, because I know with what you're telling me about, it kind of lines up with, like, how I was coming up, like, where you had to actually work for it. And mm-hmm. uh, especially, like, back then, like, before, like, Soldier Boy hit internet mainstream and all this other stuff. But, like, how do you feel, like, the differences between, like, you trying to get on back then versus, like, artists trying to get on, like, right now? I think it's a lot. it's a lot easier now. It, it's not, it's not, some people may say it's not easy now because they just, they living in these times. But compared mm-hmm. to what, what we went through, um, first of all, you didn't have the same access you do now. Um, access to a, a many different platforms. There's so right. many different ways you can blow up right now. We didn't have that back then. You know, the internet was just, it just started popping, you know. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram or anything. Could you like, imagine if we would have had social media back in oh our time, God. though? <laughs> bro, I'll be thinking about this almost daily. Like, man, I probably would have been caught up by my mom for sure. Like, for yeah. sure. But then I also might have been like a little hood celebrity at the same damn time. Because we used to get into <laughs> some shit, man. Like, for real. We used for to have real. some fun. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's crazy. And then, you know, as far as promotions, like, I remember – you had to have a real last street team. Like you had yeah. to do, like you had to put in, you had to get you a, 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 your crew and y'all had to pound the pavements up and down different blocks, posting up posters. Interacting you know, with people. Yeah. Like in person, not behind no phone or. Exactly. You know, yeah. You know, rapping, you, you, you. And you really had to, you really had to fight and earn your respect out in the streets, literally in the streets. You know what I mean? People talk about these streets, like, but they talking virtually. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm talking about in your face, you know? They talking Sesame Street with it. Yeah, you know, but, um, in, in the studio, in the studio time, paying for studio, it felt like it, it felt like it was a, it was a lot of money for me, you know, back then, you know, I remember taking checks you know that i earned from work and just putting it to the side we did a little mm-hmm. we had our little hustle game too you know of course of course <laughs> y'all saying pete cats of course 
you know, we had our, we had our little hustle, you know, so that we could get some studio time. But even that, man, you couldn't, you still had to master it. That was, mm-hmm. a, that was, you know, you still had to mix it and master it. You come out the studio, your stuff, your shit ain't even mixed. <laughs> You just Trust me, I, I I learned that one the hard way, dog. I thought I was stunting until yeah. we played it in the club, and it was just boom, boom, boom. You know how it, it is, man. You don't mix yeah. and master it properly, bro. Yeah. Oh, it sounds horrible. And the, the, the you know the other part about it is, these days you don't really need radio to blow up. Right. Like, there's a lot of cats out here. They hot. There's a lot of cats. I'm watching. They moving. They making money. They got. They streaming. But they don't even have to be on broadcast radio to do it. It's hard for me to get people to send clean music over. You know, I'll mm-hmm. tell you that right now. Like, and I learned this from you know, from from my artist days because of my nephews and nieces. Um, my cousin was like, "Yo, like they want to listen to your music, but you cuss too much. So why don't you try to clean it up next time?" I was like, "Damn." So you know, plus I got a baby girl now, so it's just like when you're in the studio, it's so much easier to get a clean edit of the song right then and there as well mm-hmm. and and knock it out both ways. But like I said, man, radio starting to become extinct. People are starting to not check for radio because if you're, it seems like re- the mainstream radio is, is told what they need to play. And that's what the difference is between like us, Waves of the Bay, and, and then we get to play whatever we want to play. So that's right. why we put on for y'all, you know what I'm saying? But they're being told they have to play you know, Rod Wave or whoever the hell, whoever the popular person is, you know, Billie Eilish or whatever the cat, you know, yeah, it's, it might be. It's it's, it's the it's a format. You you know, you you know you know how it is. You in radio, so you, mm-hmm. you know they have there's a format that they have to stick to, a certain amount of hot, hot you know charting songs, and then you have your 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 current, and then you have your mid, and you have you throw in a little bit of old, you know, right right nineties or whatever. You know, so it's a format that you have to stick to. And because of that, it doesn't leave a lot of opening for artists to to get in there. You know, and you we're right. not hearing we're not hearing different sounds, different music, um, different vibes. We only get one vibe on the radio. You know That's what I mean? It. Mm-hmm. Whatever whatever is hot right right now is that bop. That bop is is hot mm-hmm. right now. You know, whatever whatever is is popular right now, that's the only vibe we get in, you know. And people and people are smarter now than they were before. You know, before you just you listen, whatever they play, that's what it that's what you go on with. That's it. That's it. But now, now that we have that access, you can actually go find it. Yeah, you can actually go find it. And radio personalities now, they like I could go get this money. I go get this Spotify deal. I could go get this title deal and get my own podcast, have my own show, and do what the hell I want to do. And I ain't even got to. I ain't even got to listen to the program director no more. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. why you see where this is at right here, man. We can yeah. do our own thing. We don't need to worry about nobody else, man. Especially with the whole pandemic showing me how easy it is to go virtual with this stuff. Like, come on, man. Like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why now? We came up similarly, man. This is kind of cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have yeah. some of the same experiences with stuff, man. Um, let me see here. I want to talk about the new album. And I know I got some songs here. I definitely want to play some of these songs. But uh, let's talk about the album and let's talk about the crew, man. How's, how's everybody doing, man? ACMG is doing good, man. You know, we we... We we stay tight. We stay family. I feel like I haven't seen y'all in so long, man. Like it's October, and <laughs> I know I haven't seen a lot of people since March at the earliest. So yeah. I feel like I haven't seen y'all in a while, man. It's 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 been a while. So um, we still we still family. Um, Leon Da Vinci, he's doing his thing. Like he's he's really buzzing. He's really moving. I he's believe getting- it. I've seen uh with some. Grape soda or something. I seen grape that st- track from a while yeah. back, and yeah, I think grape I saw soda. another track he dropped recently or something. I feel like yeah, it. um, B Water. Um, That's it. Yeah, B Water. Um, so he just he just recently dropped CBD Hills. It's about eight tracks. <laughs> he calls it an EP. Now we call it an album because it's eight tracks. But um, but he's got a whole different vibe on there, you know. Um, He's a very talented lyrical cat, you know. I've, 
you know, I, I'll tell you a quick story about him and how, how, how we connect. Um, I'm, I've known his family for a number of years. Um, I started off um, working out, working, working with one of his cousins. Okay. Um, she was a vocalist. She was a singer for, for us. And um, we worked on a couple of demo um, tracks for her. Um, her name is Passions Gates. Um, she's doing other things now. This, like, this was years ago. Um, and his uncle, I'm friends with, we have, we have mutual friends and his uncle brought him to me when he was about 16, 17 years old. Okay. And he was just raw talent. He had his crew. He, he came to my house. They, it was about four or five of them cats, you know, and they hungry. But when it came time to spit, I had my own crew. You know, and I had the, you know, that they freestyle. We check them out. We, we put them, we put them through it before we decide to bring you in, you know? Um, so, but I noticed he was the hungriest out of all of them. All of them were talented. All of them have, have potential, but he just stood out, you know, and it, and, and I didn't give him any leeway because he, I knew his uncle with this music. I don't play, you know, so it's right. different. But he really had something there, and we just built from there, you know. So now he's he's got he's got CBD Hills out. Um, it's doing it's doing well. I think he released it last month or the month before last. Okay. And now he's he's keeping it moving. He's about to release another single. Um, he's been doing work with some 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 uh, producers up in Atlanta. Um, they've been bring they've been flying him in and out periodically every three to four months working on something <laughs> um kb kb is um she's doing all right i still got her in my pocket <laughs> oh i already know i already know uh K- kb has has taken a break um ve- another talented vocalist um mm-hmm. she's so versatile she sings pop she sings r&b people don't know she sings gospel too she sings some, little, some inspirational Because she can actually sing. She's not like a studio singer, you know? No, not at all. She sung, she was singing barbershop when I met her, singing a cappella. So, and she has a <laughs> wide range, a wide range that people don't even know. They have no idea. And the crazy part about it, you know her, you've heard her voice, right? Mm-hmm. She was singing bass. She was she was singing bass in barbershop. That's how what? wide her range is. They, they couldn't, they couldn't find a, a they couldn't find find a bass, so they couldn't find a baritone, so they used her because she can sing in different octaves. Wow. Yeah. So she's still doing that <laughs> on this on this side that you know, just to keep sharp and stay in the game. But um she she had another career opportunity that was a lot more lucrative than what than what we had for her. You know, and I ain't mad at her. I was no, I was you can't be. I was upset. I was hurt, Tom. <laughs> I was hurt. I was. But that's like, family, so family always yeah. comes back, though. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, she's um, uh, them numbers was looking good. You know, her numbers when she put that album out, um, it was it was doing so well, and and the numbers they wasn't just here in in, in the Bay Area. We seen a lot of um numbers on the West Coast. We seen a lot of streaming up north and Midwest. She she was starting to get a real following, you know. But hey, you got to make that money. I ain't mad. Yes, at you it. do. Yes, you do. <laughs> but okay, so let's bring it back to me because we talking. So now about we're me. talking about you and this brand new yes. album. Yes. Go ahead. What's the name okay, of the so album? It's called "As Long as I Live and Breathe." Mm-hmm. As long as I live and breathe, and um, Tone, this album is so special to me, man, because I've been. I had been working on this for about a year and a half, you know, just stacking my catalog, still recording. So when Boss Moves came out, you was already working on this? When Boss Moves came, let me tell you, Boss, you know what Boss Moves was? Um, Boss Moves were the tracks that I couldn't fit on this album. It was a totally different vibe. Got you. you. Got you. Um, Cause I has I had so much I wanted to say. If you listen to Boss Moves, Boss Moves is about is about that hustle. Um, I'm sharing some pointers and some tips on how you should move in the game. You know how you should act, what your attitude should be, right? 
I couldn't fit that on this album because it was so it was so much going on on this album. So I was like, I'm just gonna put I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this off to the side, and I'll give them this. I'll give this to the people to munch on while I'm still wrapping this up because this right, album, here, right. like I said, is special. Um, but it's called "As Long as I Breathe," and it's more of like a it's it's a testimony. Um, it's conviction. Um, when you when when you hear those words, when you hear somebody say "as long as I live and breathe," they're they're telling you this is what I'm committed to. You know, what yes, I mean? that's some seriousness right there. You know what I mean? So, um, so what I do is I'm addressing um, family matters. You know, I open up a little bit. I get beneath the surface. Um, the last couple of projects that I've worked on, music I've done in the past, I really didn't dig deep and really show you who I am but behind the name. So with this album, I'm able to do that. Um, I talk about the social unrest, what we're going through today. Um, I get a little a little bit political and then I get um, personal, you know, talking about uh, the loss of friends. You know, I, we talked about this earlier. Um, mm -hmm. I lost, we lost another, uh, a founding member, a founding member um, in ACMG, uh, Paul Williams. And Though, though he was, he wasn't always with us because he had other things he was involved in as far as music. He always um, gave his 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 soul to the music and to what we were doing, and uh, always checking in on us. So I dedicate a, a portion of the album to him, and I have a couple of tracks um, um, with him on it because he wrote a lot of he wrote a lot of a lot of our a lot of our vocalist lyrics. Um, when you hear his voice, how does that make you feel right now? Because I know my cousin passed away, and we had some songs together, and it's kind of eerie. It it's, it was actually rough. It was rough doing it um, and hearing his voice um, in the mixing. Uh, one of the producers, he was like, "We I can't get through this. Just cut it off. Mm -hmm. You know, just stop it." Because we we were trying to um, listen to see how how far we need to go into the mix and, and any touch-ups and everything. And he was like, I got it, Ray. I, I, I know what you, I know where you're going with this. Let's move on to it. You know what I mean? So right. it was a little tough, but, um, but I'm glad I did it. Um, I'm glad I put it, I was able to put this on the album so that people can, can really hear his voice um, and see where he was coming from, you know? Um, so with us, as long as I live and breathe, it's also I'm carrying um, my homies on my back as well in this. You know, there's other tracks where I talk about um, E. Villain, the the uh, my my other friend who mm -hmm. passed away years ago. You know, I talk about him on that on my last track, um, which is called Before My Weight. So yeah, man, it's and this may don't hold me to this. This may be my last solo album. Man, bullshit. I hear that all the damn time. <laughs> Let me just tell you, the, the last time I believed that was Too Short, album number 10. <laughs> I remember <laughs> the summertime, 95, 96, he said he was retiring. And this nigga still dropping some albums right now. It's 20 yeah. years later. So bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. This, this music is hard to get away from, man. I get anxiety <laughs> when, I, when I say I'm going to hang it up. You know what I mean? I do. Mm -hmm. I really do. I truly get anxiety, man, because it's been a part of my life. Like, what am I, what am I going to do? It's, it's you just like, fall back into something else knowing you. Fall back into being more of an executive or whatever. You still be associated with music in some capacity, of, but of you course. probably be back there ghostwriting for somebody or, or doing all that, too, knowing you. But, but Tom, I, 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 have, I, have to, I have to put the brakes on this so that those, those people that we talk about, KB, um, we talk about Leon Da Vinci and there's a couple of other artists that I'm working with, a couple of other producers that I'm working with and I'm mentoring. Um, in order for me to give, give them my 100%, I gotta be, I gotta be available and I gotta be ex accessible. And I can't do that in trying to juggle my own solo career. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And at this point, when I hear my son wanting to rap and I actually did a, I did a track. He's, it's not on this project. But um, I did a track with him, and it was just weird. I'm like, 
bro, I need to get out the way. I need to get out LeBron the way. LeBron and Bronny over here, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to get out the way so these cats can breathe, you know? So I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting out. You know, we talked about, about my journey and what, I've, and what I've gone through. But the blessing in all of that is that I'm able to bless other people with that, with my resources, with my contacts, with my experience, you know, the stories I share with you, I share with, with, mm-hmm. with artists that I'm in contact with and able to learn and take from that. Those are resources and, and access that we didn't have, you know? So I've done all the footwork. So now I'm going to just, I'm going to give it to you and, and hopefully you can take it to the Pass next. Pass the baton and <laughs> let's get this shit finished up. I feel yeah. It. yeah. Don't need, don't need to waste time. You ain't got to waste your time in, in studio time. We got it right here. You ain't got to waste your time in context. We got the context right here. We got the platforms right here, you know? So but that's a problem with a lot of artists. They don't have any type of direction or any type of plan. And you already have that. So that's going to be key. Like, that's yeah. going to be major right there. But yeah. uh, I, I want to play some of this music, man. I want to play Please some of this do. music. Please you sent me do. four songs. I played my demands on the radio show already. So I want to go with one of these other three tracks here. Which one okay. do you want me to play first? Ooh, as long as I live and breathe. That's, that's off the new album. Just the title track of the album right here, then? That's the title track of the album right there. Okay. This is what it is, man. We're going to play this track. We'll be right back in just a moment, y'all. Dizzy Vision. Dizzy Vision. Dizzy Vision. Dizzy Vision. Dizzy Vision. Dizzy Vision. As long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live. As long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live. I'ma keep my faith in God. I've traveled many miles. He brought me this far. Had many trials, and God was right there. When times got hard, ain't nobody else care. I'ma represent my family. Love for my elders, paying homage to their memory. Forever grateful for the tools that they hand to me. To be a leader was they plan for me. Be the best man I can be. I'ma always love my wife. Thankful for our sons, yeah, they my life We buy the foundation and gotta raise them right They don't have our struggles, but we build them for the fight I ain't never gonna stop until I reach the top I'm focused, relentless, persistent, consistent Always ascending, fully committed My will is tremendous As long as I live, as long as I breathe As long as I live, as long as I breathe As long as I live as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live. I'ma make my mama proud. I owe you for the lift for them times feeling down. You gave me words of encouragement. I was lost, now I'm foul. See my life flourishing. Now my feet on solid ground. I'ma make sure you good. Can have you living on supplement. Second gen in the hood. Raised by the government. Them days wasn't good. Now I see you loving it. As long as I live. Nothing separate me from my mother no. Even when we disagree, I'm a, lover. I'm a lover I know it break a heart, I'm apart from my brother I need to make amends with my brother as long as I breathe. I'ma make an effort for us to stay connected Differences aside, hope you accept it My apologies, please don't reject it These family ties should never be severed As long as separate. I live, as long as I breathe As long as I live as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live, as long as I breathe, as long as I live. See, this is the thing I can't stand about myself, dog. I get so excited about shit, dog. Like, <laughs> that just got me hyped right there, dog. That was dope. That was Appreciate dope right it. there. I felt that, man. Like, 
Oh, I can't stand it about myself, but that's just hot <laughs> right there. All right, so that's the title track from the album right there. As long as I live, as yeah. long as I breathe. That's yeah. my man. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, all that's all right. that's produced by my man Dizzy. Um, Dizzy, the Dizzy Vision. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. So, uh, is he, I saw you work with him. I saw you work with Tango. Like, who else did production on this album? Okay, so I got my man Tango from Tango Beats. Um, I got Dizzy. And then I have another producer. People, they, not too many people know about this one. He's coming up. He's nice. His name is um, Simba. Um, Simba. 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 He, he's, he, he, he's a new cat that's coming up here, coming up out here in St. Pete. And he's with he's with Tango. That's that's Tango's right hand man. And um, I feel like this, I've heard. I feel like I've reached out to him for a beat battle one time before. Okay. So I may. I feel like I have. I can't remember though. Oh man, you you need. If you need me to, I will. I will get him. Uh, oh, the next beat battle I do is gonna be epic, man. I can't wait. But I have no idea what it's gonna be. But <laughs> I can't wait. And I've though. been I've been trying to get get a member of my team on there, man. I've I've been trying, but they you know they. They're busy because they're working. They're working with artists that we deal with, and then they have other artists that they that they work with and everything. So they always give me excuse. I, I don't. I, I don't think. I know they're not scared. I just. Uh, I just think that they they highly critical, you know, of their beat making, <laughs> and they they may feel a, a type of way or something. You know, you don't have to. You you preaching to the choir, man. Like after, before, like I'll say, like about how, like after round one of the first beat battle, I saw just how producers are. So I was like, I don't like. Let me try to cater to them. I don't want no problems with y'all. Like <laughs> I don't yeah. want anybody thinking this is rigged. I, I got producers yeah. judging stuff because I, you know, I just I got a, a consumer ear. I need somebody that right. can actually break it down and exactly you know, get to the nitty gritty. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So they can tell where the plug ends at and where the ways are. Right, you know? right. <laughs> they be talking all that producer talk. I'm like, what? Like, all right, man, you got that. You got that. But uh, yeah, so it's Simba, Tango Beats, Dizzy. Um, we have our, our in-house and founding member Super T. He did most of the mixing on it. Um, I produced a couple of tracks on it. Uh, I think the how that feel? How that feel for you? It felt good, man. I, I I've been um, it's been a while since I've actually put my my touch on things, you know, because I, like riding a bike for you. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, well, you know, I had to, <laughs> I had, I had to, I had to make some adjustments. But yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. It, it was a little, I, it was a little tough. It was a little tough. And plus, you know, I, I feel, I feel a little, I feel, I feel some type of way because I'm competing with these cats and these cats, they putting out bangers, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, damn. I gotta make sure if I'm going if I'm gonna put if I'm gonna put my touch on this shit, I gotta make sure it's at the level that they the bar that they have already set. You know what I mean? Right, it's gotta match. Right. You can't be like, I don't know who did that track, but oh You don't even need to hear that shit already. <laughs> already, dog. Cause you know they're gonna give it to you. And you ain't even oh, trying man. to hear that, dog. Yeah. I and and and, and this and this crew, man, the the fam, they we one thing we do, we don't lie to each other. Mm-hmm. We don't lie to each other because if Especially because we see that our names are attached to a certain works and we can't have that. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, though we, we've done a lot of work, you may not see a whole lot of body of work that has been released because we're very critical about what we put out, you mm-hmm. know? So they'll tell you like, like, yo, Ray, I don't know about that one. I ain't, you may want to hold that. <laughs> you may want to hold like that. You know, That's the importance I, of branding and quality, right there, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you there's, there's no yes man. <laughs> there's no yes man. But yeah, man. But uh, I gotta I'm, play this track with Kano, man. Like, oh, I gotta play this track with Kano. Like this yes. thing is calling me. We got uh for anybody out there, man. This is like I said, episode one of the Tone Deaf Testimonies. I'll be rambling, so I have to set a timer. Or a stopwatch to, to shut myself up. We're gonna go a little bit over time, probably just a little bit though, just because I just a little bit, just a little bit. You know, we got to do it. I'm adjust my time and for everybody else as well. But this dude sent me like four tracks, and the last track he sent was like 
after the buzzer type track. Like I already had all the music keyed up and lined up and everything. And I look at my phone, I see a message. It's like, oh, you're gonna like this song right here. It's featuring Kano. What? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna need to hear that shit. So explain this song to me, man. Break this down for me. Okay, so Dizzy gave me this track. Um and immediately when I heard it, I just started right into it. And um, when I had finished up, I was like, I need Kano on this. And Kano, he can vouch for me on this. I talk What Kano, made you think about Kano, man? Because we had when when we um when we first met each other, we met him at one of one of one of the shows that you you had. We was on the same I love hearing that shit, man. At, I at, love at hearing the, that. At the full bar. Mm-hmm. So um after after I heard this cat, I was like, I gotta work with him. I gotta work with him. You know what I mean? I I, I like I like what he's saying. Um he's 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 on his own island out here. He's 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 straight hip hop and um uh, but he's so Saint Pete. <laughs> that's that's what I that's what I love about him. You know like what a mean? damn crab tray out the back type shit, though. You know that's what I mean? That's like, yeah. yeah. I was like, I gotta work with him. But when I got the, when I, I said, I need to figure out how I can, how I can link up with this cat, how I can work with, with this cat. But when I got that track, when Dizzy gave me that track, and I wrote the first verse, I said, this is, this is, this is the one I want him on. So I reached out to him, bro. I reached out to Kano over a year ago about this track, and he was like, Yeah, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. But he was busy. He's moving. He's doing. I I I get it. Ano just had a baby girl. Like yes, congratulations. Yesterday, I think bro. it was. So shout out to you, Kano. Shout and, out to and, you and to Mama Freeman too, man. Like congrats, y'all. Yes, yes. And 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 such a great season, Libra season. It's the it's the perfect time <laughs> to have a baby. <laughs> hey, somebody needs to man. I'll let y'all have that. My season got completely disrupted by this Rona boy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, so I I had been. So, you know, I let him, I was like, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be stalking, dude. You know what I mean? So I, I sent him the track and uh, he held on to, he said, yeah, yeah, I like this. I'm, I got you. I got you. But then I didn't hear from him for a while. And, but then I see him doing his thing. I'm like, okay, so he busy he's doing his thing about to drop his album. I got it. Mm-hmm. I understand. You got to be selfish in this game. And then um, fast forward this year, I said, yo, man, you good? Yeah, I'm good, man. I said, nice album. I love your album. I'm still working on mine, but I'm waiting for I'm waiting for this feature, this cat. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to handle this. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'm still waiting on this cat to um do this feature for me, and then I'll probably be wrapping up my project. He's like, I got you. I know what you I know where you go. So, <laughs> so man, he came through and um we did it. So this one right here is called is called Someday. And um it's it's about it's 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 some it's some real some real shit, man. It takes it, it t- it's going to take you back to the to the crack days in the streets. Um, this is a, this is the is I'm telling a vivid story um, of a portion of my life when I was like I was about five or six years old during the crack epidemic. So All right. just run it. All right, let's get into this. It's someday. Dizzy Visions. Run the track! Run the track! Must be something in the air. It's something in the air. Must be something in the air. Something in the air. I was six on fifth watching the snow fall. Witness is making the cut, then draw the short straw. On the park bench, they would drift. Mine was so gone. Consciousness slip as the wind blow. Taking the scent, a blinker and piss. Beneath my feet, concrete, broken glass and crack vials. Shattered dreams filled with fiends under dark clouds. Everybody out here getting high around me. I hear high screens and sirens around me Shots ring, bullets fly by me Bodies drop by me Watch they soul lift and drift, why me? Must be something in the air It's something in the 
here. Must be something in the air. It's something in the air. I sleep and wake up to nightmares. Sounds of people under the stairs. Kids in the hallway playing Candyland. Snatched by Candyman, and nobody cares. We're all out of tears. There's a fight for survival in the life that you fear. What's hope around here? We broke around here. Got a church on every corner, plenty dope around here. Zombies roam around here. They don't last long around here. Lucky if you make it to your 21st year. I think it's something in the air. Plans, goals, dreams, yeah. Must be something in the air. It's something in the air. Must be something in the air. It's something in the air. Righteous and passionate, this was no accident It was predicted I'd become something great Continue to create It must be something in the air Cause I can feel the essence Thinking back on them nights when I was broken Just stressing I was clueless, I ain't no shit about investments Now I turn my phone on and my cash app progressing Remaining humble, even when certain plans crumble One bullet can end it all, rest easy stack bundles They jealous of you, so they rather kill you They hate the fact that other people feel you What a wicked planet, breaking down organic on my magazine You wish the worst for me, but I still hope that you fulfill your dreams Sincerely, Kano Must be something in the air Rock with that one right there, man. Okay, I see you, Joe. I see you, Joe. <laughs> so, all this is coming on the new project right here. Yes, yes, okay. yes. It's it's so crazy. This on my way track is also on the new project too. No, okay. So the on my way, the on my way track, that's on um that's on a, a previous um project that I had done. Um the 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 project is called on my way, and I did that. I dropped that in two in twenty fifteen. Okay. Um, and, uh, that right there, that was, that was a totally different vibe. I was like, I'm out here. I'm hungry. I'm, I'm on my grizzly. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm re I'm actually re-releasing that project. I had to pull it down and let me get this out to artists who, who, who don't know. Come it's, on very, it, man. it's very important that you brand yourself properly. Cause I made, I made a, I made a terrible mistake. You need to brand yourself properly. And if you have a name that is hot, trademark that shit as soon as possible so nobody gets it. So, Tone, let me tell you what happened to me. I've always been Ray Reck, a.k.a. Reckless. Mm -hmm. But the team decided that Reckless is the name that's been catching. So let's run with it. So they started my catalog with Reckless. The problem with that is, like, there's a lot of Reckless out there. Right. Not all of them spell it the same way as I do, but this one particular artist did, and he's popping overseas. So um, it was our first time distributing, and our, my project, my On My Way project, my debut project, um, official debut, it went under his catalog, under his name. So no disrespect to him. But let's just say I don't sound nothing like this cat. Nah, either way, <laughs> nah, I need my money. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I will say, um, I did get a lot of um, streaming on the international level from it. But people out here, when they was looking for me, they will, they will always his name will pop up, his catalog would pop up. So um, I was like enough of this shit at first it was cool because i was getting mm -hmm. the numbers i was getting the streams i'm getting the royalties i'm getting the money so we'll just roll with it but it's much more than that now especially when i'm rolling out artists and we trying to the thing the other part about it is you you want to tag this your shit name. part of the legacy man like that's part it, of the exactly. resume though like nah exactly so now i'm attaching artist names to shit because we're doing features and everything and mm -hmm. now they rolling up under his catalog we can't have that so 
I pulled the project down and um, I'm re-releasing it, and it's gonna be it's gonna be under my my catalog name, which is Ray Rec. I'm still reckless, but it, right. Ray Rec under that catalog, so that way everybody has a chance to hear all the music I put out. You know what I mean? So all my way is is from that project. Okay, all right, that's dope right there. And then, like I said, my demands would play that one on the radio too. And yes. Let me see yeah. what we're looking at on time here. We got like five minutes, man. I, 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 okay. Because I, like I said, we're doing like overtime right here, man. I yeah. know that you are – I got a couple questions to ask you, actually, man. Let me let me, let me me roll into like this one, man. With everything going on, like with the social unrest and uh, like the whole Black Lives Matter movement, like how is it for you being a father of black men? Like how has that been for you? <laughs> it's heartbreaking, man. It is, it's, it's heartbreaking. I'm so sick and tired. Um, and I'm really concerned about my sons. I got three sons. I got one 17, one um, is about to be 15. I have one that's, that's about, about to be 13. You know what I mean? Um, on my son's 17th birthday, I had, to, I had to have this talk with him again, you know, with, with jo- the, the uh, Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd. I told him, I, I said, son, you're 17 years old now, and though you are still a child that we know of, you're still a teenager, you look like a man. You look like a young mm-hmm. man. You look like a man that everybody fears. You know, because he's, he's got the braids and, you know, the twisted up, and he wears the hoodie. He, he got his own style or whatever. But I said, they don't see you the way we see you. They don't know. You don't walk around with... I'm in school. You don't walk around with the t- with the title. I have two parents who love me. Um, you don't walk around with the title. I'm an I'm a student athlete. You know, they just see you, and right. unless and t- until you have the opportunity to show differently, they're going to see you like how they see people on in on the media. We just some some you know some some hoodlums. We just some some criminals or uh, offenders. This- thugs, offenders, yeah. <laughs> offenders or whatever. And I said, you know what? And it don't matter how well you perform. Somebody's always going to remind you of what, of what they think of you, you know? So I said, make sure that you always respectful, always treat people with respect, but don't be a pushover. And if you encounter some cops, know your rights. Remember, you still under the age. So if you get encountered with a cop, say, hey, um, I'm not answering any of your questions. Please call my mother and call my father. That's what you say to them. Please call my mother. Please call my father. I will not answer any of your questions. You know, um, so I had to give him, give him those instructions, man. But I'm just I'm just tired, Tom. Because I had the same conversation when when uh tra- when it when tr- with Trayvon Martin, they were small then, you know, and I had to have this conversation with them. So it's 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 ridiculous. So it's getting a little bit old right now, man. It is. I don't see any change inside. I mean, I'm glad to see people fighting back against it, and, you know, protesting uh, for for a reason, you know. But at the same time, like since uh. I don't even know whose name to say right now, man. Like, there's been so many names right yeah. now. But let's say since – I don't even remember who got shot back in April. But since April, it's been, like, somebody getting shot and killed every other week. Right. And it's just been, like, Breonna Taylor's killers are fucking walking free. And that got to be the biggest bullshit slap in the face shit you're going to see right there, man. And They're that, getting charged and, and for that whole thing was, that whole thing the is neighbor's complete. apartment. That's some bullshit, yeah. man. Yeah, and the that's, that was – a attorney general of Kentucky is a fucking coon for that shit, man. For real. Well, it, it, because he's in the pockets of the Republicans, you know what I mean? Um, look, look who, look who he's associated with, Mitch McConnell. You know, he spoke. You had, if anybody was paying attention and understood the connections, they. I knew it when when they invited him to speak at the RNC convention. When they when they when they invited him, I knew what time it was. Right. I knew we, was, we wasn't going to see any justice. And they, that was a power play. It was like, look, we're going to let you, we're going to give you this platform. We know you want to climb up in the political arena. Uh, so we're going to have you speak, but we're going to need you to do this for us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, that's, and I knew it was coming. They, they, they think they so slick, but we smarter than that now, Tone. I mean, in this day and age, we got so much 
so much um, avenues for information. We educating ourselves, and again, we tired. Right. So we ain't gonna stand for that shit no more. So th- that you know, it, it, it's funny. It's funny now. It's so blatant, and they think they slick, it, but it looks stupid now because we know that we know the games you playing. You know, but I tell people shit ridiculous, oh, bro. Yeah, you got. That's why you got to vote. You know, people. Tone, let me say this. We in Florida, I think the primary during the primary election, out of all the voters, only about 30 to 40 percent voted in the primary election. The primary election is the is where you vote for your city and local officials. Mm-hmm. You see how we fall short? So when you mad because these judges <laughs> and these attorney generals and these mayors and these governors and senators, you mad because of the decisions they make over us and not getting us the justice that we need? Well, um, we have to take some accountability because we had the opportunity. We voted them in. All right. As a people, we voted them in. People focus on on these presidents. These presidents, they don't give a shit. They these presidents don't make no decisions for us in in our local and state. They make they don't make those decisions for us. They can suggest. They can influence. They may be able to step in. But it's the it's the city and local officials and the state officials who make the the judgment judgment and 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 laws on for us, you know, and we vote on. Oh, you must have knew what time it was because <laughs> the alarm just went off right there, man. <laughs> Reckless, what I want to do, man, I want you to go ahead and drop all your social media information so people can follow along. And and and, and when is the new album drop in October? What? 10 2020. <laughs> 10 2020. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yes. Yes. So yeah, what's your social media info? Okay, so um Instagram at Ray Rec, Twitter at Ray Rec, Facebook at Ray Rec, aka Reckless. So just you know, hit me up. Look you better out spell Reckless, dog. R E K L E S S. There you go. Yes, there and that's go. Ray Rec, R-E-H-R-E-K. There you go. They're going to be looking for somebody else and be like, what the hell is this shit? They're going <laughs> oh, to be on YouTube. No They're going to be on YouTube pulling up Ray's Reckless <laughs> Recovery. And... <laughs> oh, hell no. Nah. R-E-H-R-E-K, Ray Rec. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. What I want you to do is just, uh, I want you to drop like one tidbit one jewel on the way out of here for anybody out there that needs to hear whatever it may be about drop a jewel okay i say this man first of all go out and vote vote for yourself vote for vote for your friends and family who are not able to vote um and if anything i don't care what party you affiliated with if you tired of this shit if you tired of social unrest you tired of this covid COVID-19, you need to be out there voting and in honor of John Lewis. John mm-hmm. Lewis, a civil rights icon. Rest up, sir. Let's, let's, let's honor him. Let's honor him by voting. It's not, it's not a privilege. It's a right. And people need to know that the Voters' Rights Act is, um, it gets replayed every couple of years which means this is a this is an act that they have to reauthorize that they have to reissue that means that at any point in time they can take that shit away from you mm-hmm. you know what i mean so exercise your right to vote get the people in office that will stand for you for you for your community and your peoples straight up man Straight up. This has been the Tone Deaf Testimonies, man. You're the first guest on here. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Tone. You. I appreciate you, man. Bruh, thank you for I taking time it. out to talk to me. I'm excited to hear the whole album and what I've heard already. It sounds dope. And like I said, this is a side project from what we do, Waves of the Bay. But uh, one of these songs I just played tonight, it's going to be played on Waves of the Bay coming this Saturday. So That's what's uh, I haven't That's decided which one. I'm thinking it's going to be the title <laughs> track, honestly, man. For real, that thing we're jamming. So. Run it. Run it.
I'm going to have to, Doug. I'm going to have to. But, man, thank you once again for taking time out to be the first guest on Tone Deaf Testimonies. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and trademark and run with the Tone Deaf Tuesdays. And Let's do it's it. It's going to be dropping on Tuesdays right here, man. So anybody out there, my webpage is right there, tone-capone.com. I spell my name with a K. You spell it with a C. You will not see me. I will catch y'all the next go round. Y'all be easy. Easy. Peace. Peace, hey. man. <laughs> this is Tone Capone and DJ Spaceship. And Saturday nights from 10 to midnight, we bring you Waves, Waves of, of the, the Bay. Bay. Right here on WMNF 88.5 Tampa. With the hottest interviews, the hottest music. You can submit your music for the Tampa Bay Watch segment at Waves of the Bay Radio at gmail.com or follow us on all social media at Waves of the Bay. Every Saturday, 10 to 12, make sure you come and ride the wave. Yes, sir.